just as I expected, we did. We had a positive order value of 28% today. There was a lot of hedging taking place on Tesla stock. This was in anticipation of the data coming out tomorrow, the CPI report, and then the following day on Wednesday, Fed Jerome Powell. Here in this video, we're going to get into what's going on in our market. Some surprising things that maybe you did not know. This can have both positive and potential negative implications for stocks and for Tesla specifically. We're also going to get into a rumor that it's continuing to spread that could be a game changer for Tesla stock. I mean, to the bottom line, this could be huge. So we need to get into that as well. I will give you guys an estimate of what I think CPI is going to be, whether or not I think tomorrow is going to be a good day or a bad day. And we could see a really bad day or potentially a really good day. So this video could not be more important. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if this is your first time here. Consider sticking around a while and let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. So back to what we said in the start of this video. You had 678 different hedge fund and institutional trades worth $1.55 billion today with a positive order value of 28%. This is pretty typical. This is nothing to be alarmed about. There was hedging that was taking place today. This was obvious in the option activity with Tesla. This was also obvious in the way money was being moved around today. Imagine it like this. If, in theory, CPI was bad, Fed Jerome Powell was bad, and stocks fell, and this has bad implications theoretically, again, for the economy, that's not what I'm expecting, but bear with me, just theoretically. If you had to be 100% allocated to stocks, what index is going to do the best? The Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, or Russell? If we go into a recession, maybe that's an easier way of putting it. Obviously the Dow. So the Dow did the best today. That was a simple way of hedging. Money moved from Russell 2000 names today into Dow names today. It's as simple as that. So Apple was down. About the same as Tesla. Microsoft was down big today. Basically all of your companies that would be negatively affected if tomorrow's CPI report is bad or if Fed Jerome Powell is bad for markets on Wednesday. But that's pretty expected. You got to expect some risk management in our markets. You also seen the VIX up 2.27% today, which if you guys don't know, the VIX is basically just showing you a reference of the put and call activity on the S&P 500. When there is more calls being bought on the S&P, the VIX goes lower. When there's more puts being bought on the S&P, the VIX goes higher. So the VIX went higher today. There was more puts being bought than calls. Let's move straight into the inflation expectations tomorrow. And before we actually look at these and I give you guys my estimates for CPI, there's three things that matter to our markets right now. There's inflation. Well, generally speaking, there's inflation, the Fed and the labor market. The labor market really kind of goes in line with the economy because if the labor market deteriorates, people lose their jobs. The economy is also deteriorating at the same time. So I guess you could say the fourth one is the economy right? But kind of the same as the, the labor market in that regard. So we know the economy is doing okay. Inflation's been doing okay, but we'll get confirmation coming tomorrow. The Fed is on Wednesday. If all things go as planned, as I expect, and we'll share in this video, this is going to open the door for lots and lots of money to enter into our markets notably into interest rate sensitive names. The Russell has been outperforming recently. That could be like 15%, 20% of the total move that we could see in the next couple of months if things go as planned. Yeah, it could get pretty euphoric for stocks because it's one thing for markets to expect four or five rate cuts. It's another thing for the Fed to also confirm that. Totally different playing field. 
a lot of big money investors, they're not certain that the Fed is actually going to cut rates four or five times. In September, literally three months ago, the Fed said one rate cut in 2024. So you're just going to believe the markets now? Well, to a certain degree, maybe they're on to something. Maybe markets are on to something. But we're not going to be convinced until the Fed also is in alignment. So there's a lot of money waiting, itching on the sidelines to enter into stocks like Tesla, into high quality, small and mid cap names. That's why tomorrow is so important. We need inflation to, to follow through. If inflation doesn't follow through, then who knows what to expect from the Fed or the dot plot? It'll be important. Coming tomorrow, the core inflation rate month over month is expected at 0.3%. Some forecasts are at 0.2%, but the consensus view is 0.3%. This would be bad news. This would not be good. Because last month, we were at 0.2%. If we are at 0.2% tomorrow, if that's what the number comes in as, the same as last month, that's fine. Doesn't matter. That's, that's perfectly fine. If we come in at 0.1%, that could make tomorrow a huge update. 0.2% is just going to be some good news. It's probably not going to be this huge update. I think the Fed is more important than the CPI report tomorrow when you boil this down. But we don't want to see core month over month come in at 0.3%. This could actually be somewhat good news. You always want to be in a position where you're expecting a high number so you can come in and come in lower, right? To, Kind of like earnings. You don't want to have super high earnings expectations like NVIDIA. Doesn't matter what NVIDIA reports. They have to report something astronomically, stupidly high to go up 20% following earnings. Like a, a killer report does not do it for NVIDIA anymore. Same logic here when it comes to data. Now, core inflation rate year over year is expected at 4%. I think this probably comes in at about 3.9 or 3.8%. I think it's going to come in light year over year as well. 4% is the same number that we got last month. Now, again, for month over month core, I'm expecting 0.2%. I'm not expecting 0.3. I'm not expecting 0.1. If I were to guesstimate, 0.1 is probably a little bit more likely than 0.3. But you're probably going to come in line with what we had last month. That's that's just my expectation, at least. Month over month, headline inflation really doesn't matter all too much. That's expected at 0%. Some forecast it at 0.1%. Last month, we were at 0%. If, if you go negative, that might be seen as some good news, at least initially, but deflation is never good. Look at the Chinese stock market. They had half percent deflation month over month, uh, and that data came out yesterday or last night, technically. And the Chinese market sold off over 2% today. So you don't want to see deflation. That's just not good for, for anyone. Now, inflation year over year is expected at 3.1%. Now, I don't think the headline inflation matters all too much as well year over year. But if you come in in the twos, like 2.8, 2.9, which is my estimate around 2.9%, then that could be really good news for some of the trading algorithms. Now, as I said in the last video, this is by far the most important week for stocks throughout all of 2023 and likely the most important week for even Q1, potentially into Q2 for 2024. This week will shift money around big time. I see no other catalyst, no other event that will shift money around the way that this week will. CPI report, again, the Fed on Wednesday. And then we're also going to get retail sales on Thursday, exports and import prices. You might be wondering why that's important. Well, about 70% of GDP is consumer spending. So we're going to get retail sales, export and import prices. Like there's, there's no bigger day for economic data besides the GDP report itself. So we're going to get clarity on inflation, the Fed, and the economy this week. Three for one, three days in a row, starting tomorrow. 
Here is a post from Jim Bianco. He runs Bianco Research. Uh, goes on CNBC all the time. Well-known figure in the trade and in trading investing community. Has almost 400,000 followers here on X. Uh, pretty, pretty loud, vocal individual sometimes. He says, assuming Nick Timmerhaus is relaying Powell's latest thoughts on policy... Nick Timmerhaus seen as the Fed's mouthpiece. The Fed appears to be taking another baby step towards rate cuts. However, any inflation release or payrolls release has the ability to change market thinking quickly. We've seen this in the past, but right now the markets are really shifting expectations. The Fed back in September told us you can expect one rate cut in 2024. That's what you can see right here. One cut. That's where the Fed has been for a while on their dot plot. Ever since July, mid-July, when the Fed met, right, uh, for the last, well, not the last time technically, but the la two dot plots ago, pretty much. You can see this orange line. Fed's expectations of rates for 2024. Look at these green ones. So, this green one is the day before the October CPI release. The markets were, were pricing in about three rate cuts. On December 11th, the markets were pricing in four rate cuts. And on December 7th, the markets, the day before the November payroll release, the markets were expecting five rate cuts. So we've shifted from five rate cuts to four rate cuts. But look at this divergence here. Look how wide this gap is. Huge. Fed expecting one rate cut, markets expecting four. We've never seen this before, at least not in 2022 or in, in other cycles. I, I, I would have to do some deep research to figure out when the last time the markets were so disconnected from the Fed. Maybe it was right before the Roni Rona. Because nobody was really expecting rates to go to zero, and that's ultimately what the Fed did. But other than that, you've never seen this before, likely in your investing lifetime. There's going to be a drastic move in treasuries this week. A drastic shift of, of capital, whether it's good or bad, to interest rate sensitive names, or money will rush out of those interest rate sensitive names. But I think you've probably only seen 20% of the move so far. If it's good, then you could still see a multitude larger move than you have seen so far already. And you've already seen quite a nice move. But interest rate sensitive names could have a lot further to run. That could mean Tesla in the 300s in a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, maybe. That would be my expectation if the Fed becomes in line with markets current pricing of four rate cuts next year. Although some of the bears might point to a weakening economy. This is a chart from B of A of job openings versus the S&P 500. You can see they typically correlate pretty closely, right? Whenever job openings are rising, the markets tend to rise because job openings are a good sign. If the dollar store by your house or Dollar General or Walmart, whatever it is, is looking to hire one employee, well, okay. But if they're looking to hire three employees, that's probably a good sign business is good. Just as simple terms as possible. Well, S&P has been going basically vertical ever since you hit the low December and job openings have been plummeting. So this would suggest to me if the Fed does not change their 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 dot plot to be in line with markets, if we still see the Fed expecting like one rate cut, maybe two rate cuts, you could see a large downside correction in the markets because it's it's not just where the Fed funds rate is going to be in 2024. If the Fed does not reduce rates quickly enough, they are going to keep way too much pressure on the economy, and the odds of a recession will also dramatically increase. So this is not just purely a numbers game here. This is like recession or no recession, potentially. One rate cut or four or five can make the difference as far as economic activity, whether we go into a recession or avoid one. And that's what the markets ultimately fear the most. Here is another post on X from Seth Golden. 
It is net equity fund manager positioning. It's showing that we're not even close to what you would expect to see during a bull market. What this is basically showing you, I'll blow this chart up, is you're just now getting to a positive equity position, meaning that when these when this green line is under this black line, you're net short on, on stocks. So people are not betting that stocks do well. Now they're slightly betting that stocks do well, but this is nowhere near what you would expect to see during a bull market. So if we do get good news this week, you could see exposure to stocks dramatically increase. You could see a lot more money get put to work in stocks. You could see shorts covering on some of those short positions making the net exposure to stocks rise. You were at almost 70% during 2021. So 30% of dollars of funds, if you will, were net short on markets, betting that stocks fell. 70% were long. What do you think is going to happen during that environment? Stocks are probably going to do well. What you've seen down here is funds were about 50, 60% net short on our markets. What do you think that's going to do? It's obviously going to be negative. You have not been this short since the great financial crisis. And you are actually more short in 2022 than you were then. <laughs> and that was obviously because of, of rates going higher as well, as well as the recession fears that would ultimately come about this Fed tightening cycle. But this chart, says to me, things go good this week. <laughs> uh, some profits are going to start rolling in probably quickly because nobody wants to be on the sidelines when things are really starting to look more constructive and good for a new year. I will also point out that during an election year, the worst thing that can happen to a president that is running for re-election is a recession. You would rather have people losing their lives in a war than a recession. Statistically speaking, you're more likely to get elected if a, a, a war breaks out than a recession because people vote on their pocketbooks when it comes down to it. So I think not being political here, it's highly incentivized to avoid a recession in 2024. By basically everyone involved, Powell doesn't want a recession, the Treasury doesn't want a recession, the government itself does not want a recession. So I think they're going to do what they need to to avoid one. If that means 10 rate cuts, then we get 10 rate cuts. If it means five rate cuts, then we get five. But either way, I, I think it probably is somewhere between four and 10. That should be good news for stocks. And I think the Fed will reiterate that coming on Wednesday. FX Evolution points out for us on X that this week you're also going to have a lot of treasury auctions. So the treasury is set to auction $108 billion worth of three-year, 10-year, and 30-year bonds on Monday and Tuesday, alongside $213 billion in shorter-term bills. The big auction that moves markets, at least right now, is the 10-year treasury auction. The 10-year treasury auction, as seen as really not dependent on near-term Fed policy, but it's not super, super long term. Like the 10 year treasury has been around for basically forever, right? The 20 year, 30 year treasuries, those are more new treasuries, if you will, that have been created within the last 50 years or so. The 10 year treasury has basically been around forever, at, at least throughout recent times. So if it's not interest rate sensitive, at least in the near term with Fed policy, then it's more so dependent on the economy and the long-term outlook of the Fed funds rate. I shared this in the video earlier, but I'll also share it again. There's a, a, obviously a lot of various opinions. There's a lot of different banks, investment banks, hedge funds, institutions. They all have their own opinions on, on different things. But Goldman, obviously one of the most well-respected investment banks out there. They say recent inflation data 
has been an encouraging surprise even to our optimistic expectations. And our forecast path for year-on-year core PC inflation has fallen somewhat as a result. We are therefore pulling our forecast of the first rate cut forward to Q3 of 2024. So that would be after June, between June and September, which right now markets are expecting the first rate cut uh, coming in May. It's really a toss-up between uh, March or May, the odds are getting a little bit more spread out here. There's a 42.3% chance that we have the first rate cut in March, 56.8% chance of the first rate cut, um, or first, uh, well, a continued pause, my apologies, in March. So there's about, uh, what, 14%, 13% gap here, depending on what inflation is tomorrow, what the Fed says on Wednesday, all of this will change. But right now, you are still expecting um, one, two, three, four. We're actually now expecting five rate cuts again in 2024. It's neck and neck, though. Uh, The odds of five rate cuts, 29.7%. The odds of four rate cuts, 28.1%. And some of this will have to do with, again, the economic outlook. The more rate cuts that the Fed is perceiving, the the more, I guess... uh, less odds we have of actually going into a recession next year. I will also point out that Goldman Sachs has one of the lowest forecasted chances of a recession next year. Goldman Sachs thinks there's only a 15% chance of a recession next year. The average view on Wall Street is around 65% chance for next year. Uh, Or image. It's always going to be in between a range. Some people are 45%. Some people are 70% in that range. So Goldman is notably more bullish on the economy and stocks for next year. To that specific point, if we do get more rate cuts from the Fed, uh, or the Fed is in line with what the markets are expecting, if we get a good CPI report coming out tomorrow, the shorts might start running for the hills. That would be the op thing to do if you were short in Tesla. And we currently have about $22 billion short in Tesla. By far, Tesla is the most heavily shorted stock on our markets. We can look at something like an Apple. Apple is what at like all time highs right now. So the short position should be huge unless a lot of shorts did cover on their uh, short positions. And yeah, yeah, the short position in Apple is is pretty huge as well at $21.26 billion. And that's, again, because Apple's stock is now $193. Tesla really hasn't participated as much, nearly to the same extent, as Apple. So if Tesla did that pound for pound, Tesla would probably be like $30 billion sold short. Hopefully you guys understand what I just said. But a lot of shorts likely to start running for the hills if tomorrow's CPI report is a good one. We are also going to get into the charts, the technicals for Tesla as well. But before we do that, we do have a big catalyst that is coming maybe by the end of this month. Really, really any time now this could happen. I talked about this in the last video, but I wanted to talk about it again in this video, just so everyone uh, understands the significance of this specific catalyst. Tesla Chan says rumors are growing that FSD beta will begin in China as early as the end of this month. Now, FSD in China is obviously going to be cheaper than the U.S., but it's still, if if my memory recalls, like eight thousand U.S. dollars in China, and about ninety percent will go to the bottom line. So what we've seen in China or what the estimated full year's delivery numbers are going to look like in China is about uh, 530,000 vehicles or so, roughly in that range. We, We obviously don't have Q4 numbers, but Q4 is probably going to be the first quarter ever that there's more deliveries in China than the U.S. So that's how significant this could be. You think FSD has a big impact on Tesla stock now? Well, if China is delivering more vehicles than we are, and I mean, they they have FSD as well, that's just going to make it that much larger. But for a little simple, I mean, just, just simple math here, okay? Um, if FSD is, call it $8,000 in China, I believe that's the number, you could do this math for yourself. It's like it's like fifth grade math, sixth grade math, I would assume. 
if you go ahead and do 90% margins, time that times that by 0 0.90, that's about $7,200 of net profits for every FSD uh, vehicle that they sell, right? If we consider China's take rate on FSD to be around 10%, the same as the US, which I would argue it might be closer to like 15% because a lot of, um, you know, Chinese citizens are very tech savvy these days. If you're in the market to buy a Tesla, you're probably in the market to acquire FSD as well. Um, a little bit more than maybe the average US consumer. Um, and I don't think that's a far stretch for anyone to imagine. But we will still go with something that is uh, a little bit more conservative here. So we'll do times 0, 0.10. 10%, 53,000 vehicles in a full year that, that could have FSD. Uh, this would be for 2024. So maybe the numbers larger. Tesla might deliver 700,000 vehicles in 2024. So maybe you could say this is 70,000 vehicles, but you get the idea here. Times that by 7,200, you could be looking at almost $400 million of net profits as an addition to everything that Tesla's doing now. This would be a bonus to the bottom line. Now, this in, in and of itself, not a crazy big deal, uh, just relative to the amount of shares outstanding on an EPS basis. You have uh, 3.3 tr uh, billion shares outstanding. So, I mean, this is what, like 10% of that. So it's not a crazy amount, but I mean, you could add a 10% EPS boost just based on FSD entering China, let alone FSD in the US, or presumably FSD entering Europe in probably the second half of 2024. They still have to get past Regulation 79 with the UN that, that basically says you have to have virtually a fully autonomous vehicle uh, to, to be able to actually sell the software and use it on the roads. There's other stipula you know, um, stipulations as well, but... Uh, that's kind of the nutshell of it. There's there's a couple regulations that prevent FSD from entering Europe, but they've been testing this for the last couple of months, and odds are it's going to enter Europe at some point in 2024. So FSD might be about to take the next, you know, step in its evolution. And I just think this is a catalyst that Wall Street is not even thinking about. The bulls, the bears, nobody's thinking about this. Gary Black doesn't even have this in his 10, 11 different catalysts um, that could move Tesla stock higher in 2024. FSD entering China is not even on his radar. It's, it's not on the bear's radar, that's for sure. And this is going to be one of those things that maybe catches people by surprise that could come any day now. This theoretically does come here soon, and this week is a good week overall. Good CPI, good Fed, good economic data. You could see Tesla stock easily in the mid 300s and probably not too long and i don't think this is optimistic by any means maybe expecting all of these data points to come out good is a little bit optimistic i'm sure there's going to be some negative in what the fed says i'm sure there could be some negative in the cpi report or retail sales could be too bad that's always a possibility but in the event everything's good tesla stock could soar from here now, I know some people were a little bit concerned because Tesla stock was down about 1.5% today, specifically 1.68%, but don't be. Apple was down 1.4%, Microsoft down 1.11%, I believe NVIDIA was also down today, uh, more than Tesla, I mean, down over 2% today. So Tesla was not the only one that, that did poorly today. It was basically all big tech across the board. And again, that was because of hedging purposes. Now, Tesla actually uh, held up pretty well, all things considered. You found a lot of support around 240. You also found support at around 237. This downtrending line of support did hold true. Now, coming tomorrow, preferably, you want to get back above that 100-day moving average at 240 two dollars 70 cents if cpi comes out as i expect it will i'm sure that will happen if you can get a close above the 
100 day moving average that sets us up really really good for wednesday overall tesla stock has been coiling to the upside it doesn't take a genius to see this this is typically a bullish pattern that gets recognized as a breakout to the upside about 75 percent of the time so the stats are pretty good in the bull's favor that tesla stock is moving higher from here but unfortunately we don't have just Tesla Catalyst to contend with. We do have all of these other factors throughout the rest of this week. Now, the RSI is in an optimal spot for an upside move at 53.57. The stock is literally neutral right now, and the MACD is also pretty bullish. Um, it's been going higher, even though the stock has been coiling. That's a pretty good sign. A lot of people are taking on some fresh new positions. So, that is going to do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about all of this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time as well, come trade these events tomorrow throughout the rest of this week. Come trade Tesla stock. You will get confirmation based on the data. Um, when that data comes out uh, and what I am doing with my personal portfolio positions when I buy, when I sell options, stock, crypto, whatever it is, whatever is doing well at the time or doing poorly. We 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 go both sides, right? If we're going long, we're going long. We go short as well. Um, uh, different uh, strokes for different folks, if you will. So that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. My name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.